2021. I have several videos coming out in the next couple weeks on the different kinds of books, a couple of lists that I'm hoping to get through. Um, and this is a very new goal that I decided on, I think, like Christmas Day. You'll see, I was inspired by something I was gifted. Uh, so in December, I read Kilbert's Diary, or rather, I finished Kilbert's Diary. I only had about 100 pages left of it. I started it in October, and then we all know I burned out, and I wanted to pick it up, finish it by the end of 2020, which I did, and I'm very happy that I did. It just feels nice to complete this as we complete the year. And it was a really lovely way to wind down at the end of a day with a diary, because I always think I'm going to read for a very long time in bed, but I get very sleepy. And um, I just want something light and easy and just gentle on my brain at the end of the day. And I found just kind of as I'm wrapping up my day, as I'm winding down, it felt really nice to kind of hear from someone else how their day was and what funny things happened. And um, there are some really sad parts in this. You hear about, you know, some really sad things that happen to people, but there are also just some really funny parts. And um, beautiful nature passages in this diary, Kilbert's diary in particular, it's the diary of a clergyman in the Victorian era. And I'll talk more about this, this book in a wrap up later on. But I just found the format really delightful. Um, so when I finished that, then I immediately um, continued on in through Maud, the illustrated diary of a Victorian woman. This was on my nonfiction November TBR. And um, it, it just kind of fell by the wayside. I really loved it. But I had lots of other nonfiction I was hoping to read. And so just in case you didn't see my nonfiction November TBR, let's give you a good um, example here. So as it says on the cover, it is an illustrated diary. And so you're getting text, you know, in certain sections, but then you're also getting illustrations of what happens in the sections that she's talking about. She was, um, you know, an amateur artist. And uh, so she decided to decorate her diary with it. There's some really funny things in here. Yes, yeah, so there's a portion where she says, Cousin Ethelred had ventured out of his world of maps and books to pay us a visit. He had upset the great G dreadfully. The great G is what she refers to her father as. He had upset the great G dreadfully by borrowing a good proportion of his library to read at breakfast and marking his place with rashers of bacon. How much of a horror story is that as a book lover that someone who borrowed your book would use bacon as a bookmark? <laughs> um, yes, so just a really delightful way to close out the day. I'm loving this. I don't um, think I'm going to finish by uh, 2021 beginning because I'm not reading that much each night and I'm okay with that. I feel for some reason I don't put nearly as much pressure on myself to finish these quickly. One, because I just read it at bedtime and two, it's not this big overarching plot and you know I, I never buddy read them, that kind of thing. So it's a really nice low pressure kind of reading. So then on Christmas, when Kate from the novel Nomad was just my Persephone godmother and um, fairy godmother, and she sent me several Persephone classics. This is the longest Persephone classics that I have. Uh, so you can see here's the other ones that I own, and there's one in there, and then one is on my TBR stack. But I have more from her now to add to my collection. They really are special books. They are books published in the early 20th century, most of them, some late 19th century, but most of them early to mid 20th century um, books by women, and a lot of them kind of forgotten books. Dorothy Whipple is one of their main authors, uh, or one of their authors, but they have several uh, published by her. But this is Few Eggs and No Oranges, The Diaries of Vera Hodgson from 1940 to 1945. This is a woman who lived in London, so obviously that is going to be um, a time that is worth writing about. And you can see this is a really long diary. So there was a lot to write about in that time. You can see it's very long and it goes from, let's see, September 1939 to May 1945. Um, so I also just love the physicality of Persephone books, the way they flop open. And they also, I don't know if you know this, but they have, um, if you haven't seen them in person, they have a dust jacket. So there's the actual cover under there. And I usually like to pull off dust jackets 
when I'm actually reading, but then put them back on for when they look pretty. Uh, so I thought, you know what? This is gonna start a project of bedtime diary reading, and I am really looking forward to it. Diaries or letters, journals, that kind of thing. Um, so then after I finish Maud, I think this will be the one that I want to get to just to switch things up from something Victorian because I have a lot of Victorian things on here. So this is not the order I'm going to go in. Uh, and the next one is uh, a little bit looser, but it's my dearest, dearest Albert, Queen Victoria's life through her letters and journals. I really want to read also, maybe I'll save it for Victober. There is apparently a collection of her uh, Victoria's letters from the uh, Scottish Highlands when she was in the Scottish Highlands, which just sounds amazing. These, these are primarily her letters to Albert. Um, there is a lot of text that aren't the actual letters. Here's the letter here. The rest of this is commentary on it. So we'll see if it's suitable for my bedtime diary reading project. If I like it, I will continue reading it. And then this one is like bending my rules a little bit, but my reading life, my rules. This is um, The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands. I feel like this is going to be very much her telling us, this is what happened in my life, and then this is what happened next. So kind of similar um, parameters as to a diary. And this is just one that I wanted to read nonfiction November, didn't get around to it. So I'm gonna make time for it now. And then I have several uh, travel diaries. If you watch my uh, Victorian Literature Hall during Victober, you will have seen these. This is A Lady's Life in the Rocky Mountains by Isabella Bird, and this is when she traveled to the Rocky Mountains in 1873. She did a lot of traveling, Isabella Bird, and in the month of April I will be incorporating as my bedtime reading then, but I'll be reading more of it um, to get through it in time for Literary Parlor when we're reading um, Unbeaten Tracks Unbeaten Tracks in Japan, I think is the name of it, and it's Isabella Bird's Travels Through Japan. Um, so her travel diary from that, which I think will be absolutely fascinating. And uh, then Untrodden Peaks and Unfrequented, why can't I say that word? Unfrequented Valleys by Amelia Edwards. And um, this is when she covered to, cover to, when she traveled to Southeastern Tyrol, which I need to look up what that is now, uh, because I don't know. I hadn't even heard that term before seeing this book. And then Roughing It in the Bush by Susanna Moody. Uh, they left Britain for Canada in 1832 and by 1839 they had established a farm and home and put behind them the false starts and hardships of the early years. So I think she's quite a tough woman living out in the wilderness and it would be really interesting to read this. Then I have, this is in my TBR stack. So actually Maybe before my Persephone book, I would get to this. This is E.M. Delafield's The Diary of a Provincial Lady. It's actually four books bound up into one together, and it is a real diary. It's not fictional. Yes, it's The Diary of a Provincial Lady. The Provincial Lady Goes Further, The Provincial Lady in America, and The Provincial Lady in Wartime. So this is next on my TBR stack. I will want to kind of uh, definitely make my way through this before the end of my, before I want to do my next TBR stack wrap-up video. Um, so just keep your eye out for that because I'll be talking about it in that. I'm really excited for this one. Again, obviously it's become apparent I like diaries. <laughs> then I have Anne Morrow Lindbergh's Bring Me a Unicorn. Uh, these are her diaries and letters from 1922 to 1928. Apparently these are just really poignant. Um, the Gift from the Sea is a really famous uh, book that I just hear everyone um, kind of who enjoys nonfiction, women's fiction, rave about. And so this is her uh, first set of diaries. They go all through her life. I think there's maybe five total. Um, they're out of print, but I found this uh, pretty, you know, it's in pretty good condition, this used copy. And I would like to read it. And there are also um, pictures included. Then one I purchased a couple of years ago, Gathering from the Grassland, a Plains Journal by Linda M. Hassel Hasseltrum. And she lives in South Dakota and runs a farm. And it's just her day-to-day -day kind of everything that happened. And I think it will be really interesting, someone who lives on a farm in South Dakota, very different from my own personal experience. And then lastly, the last one that I own is the Journals of George Eliot. Uh, so this is um, just her, her writings. And they are not all that, they're not always going to be that interesting because this is like two weeks 
of writing and you can see it's just a line for the day. Uh, but I'm hoping um, that there will be kind of some more interesting pieces. Yeah, then this is, this is really long here. So we'll see how this is. I, I have no idea what I'm going to think of her journals because her books can be really, um, really heavy and, you know, heavy going. So we'll see what it's like to read her journals and what I think of them. So this is by no means something I will complete in the year of 2021 if I'm keeping this as a low key, no pressure project. But I just thought I would tell you about what I'm planning on doing for my bedtime reading in the next year. It's something that I think will just be a nice respite at the end of the day to look forward to. Thank you for watching as always. And if you also think there is a really amazing journal or diary or letter collection that I would enjoy, please let me know down below. And I will be back for another video soon. Bye.